This video is going to show you how I used my CNC to create this growth chart ruler using an OpenSCAD script that outputted a DXF file. I used this OpenSCAD script to create the DXF that's used by the CNC to create the growth chart ruler. This version will allow you to put text in uh, to customize um, for someone's name, um, or you can delete it. The version that I uh, create on my CNC deletes it and is just the growth chart ruler. Now let's go into easel and we're going to create um, our work piece. So I started off and if you would put in a 78 inch um, piece of so six and a half feet tall, uh, at least for me, I have a four foot by four foot cutting area. It's gonna show that you're gonna need tiling, which is a premium feature. So we're gonna first import um, the piece like this, and then we're going to split it up into two um, separate pieces to get around that tiling issue and manually do it so it's free. So go into, uh, um, go down here to import, and you import a DXF um, file. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we upload a file and we're going to do the uh, growth chart and click upload. It's going to upload it in and here's the DXF file that we did design in OpenScan is we'll import it. And so now you can see um, right now that it's longer than our surface that what we can cut. So we'll first finish um, doing all the um, building the thing and then we're going to cut it up in half. So let's select all this and we're going to set the cut depth. I did a quarter inch. Um, you could do an eighth inch. So probably would save you some uh, cutting time. And then we're going to clear out a pocket. So we'll do that. You're going to notice here that these are um, issues right here and it took me a minute to figure out how to fix that. So what you do is you select the inside of it and now we're gonna say, we're still cutting a pocket, but we're gonna change that part to zero depth. And so that fixes um, each of these. So we'll go through here. So then what we have to do is we have to shift this over because we want to make sure, we have to shift this over to the left because we wanna make sure it overcuts so we don't have these radiuses along um, the board like you would see here. So we don't want those radiuses. So we'll select all of it. And we're gonna move this to the left by a quarter inch. So that'll fix that. And then also to be accurate down here, um, we want to shift this down by an eighth of an inch. So there we go. So now um, it's ready to be split up. And you go down here and you click uh, duplicate. And so now we have um, we have two pieces that are exactly the same. So you can see here my cutting surface is uh, 48 inches by 48 inches. So we can't go above uh, this uh, four foot mark. So to be safe, I went a little under that. I went in would select uh, just the bottom or the top part right here that we're going to delete. And so I deleted it above uh, three foot six inches. And so this was my first um, area, cutting area. And then I went down here to the second uh, piece and I cut and did the bottom three and a half I deleted. Now I didn't have these letters, um, so you can have those in there. Um, so this won't look exactly like what you're going to see um, on the machine. So now we need to lower this down so you can see that this is um, not at the zero. Um, so actually we're going to lower this though down to so 7 eighths. Uh, we want to bring that down to. The reason why I did this and I have it zero is after I'm done cutting this, um, this six inch mark is going to be left there and so I move the board down and then I use um, that six inch mark to be my new point that I zero off of. Um, while if this was at the zero I I guess I could go in zero and then move it one inch and re-zero it 
um, but it makes it just a little easier to have it where it starts here. So then I came over here and I, I have it set up um, where I am using an eighth inch um, bit for uh, my rough cut and then a sixteenth inch uh, for the fine cut. And then I have my cut settings. Um, I'm doing depth of cut is half the um, diameter of the bit. And one thing which I found what was kind of annoying is I initially thought with this uh, fine detail, um, which it makes sense because it's fine detail, but I thought that the 16th inch would just go where the 1 8th inch couldn't fit. But actually the 8th inch bores out all the, um, a lot of the meat and then the uh, 16th inch still goes over every single piece of um, the perimeter of every cutout. So it's not just focusing on the fine detail where the 8th inch uh, can't go. And I used eighth inch instead of quarter inch because um, cutting a quarter inch, it would be a lot faster on these lines, but then it would leave the numbers all up to the 16th inch bit, which would take much longer. So even though it's twice the amount of cutting with the eighth inch versus a quarter inch bit, um, overall the whole job um, was a lot quicker. One thing though that you might want to consider doing is piecing this up even further how I've done and have all these dashes um, be just its own cut a quarter inch and then you do another job of the um, numbers with an eighth inch and then a finishing pass of a sixteenth inch on the numbers so that probably be the most efficient way um, one, one more thing we want to do before we export the g-code is right now if we went to export it would say we need a pro um, license the paid version uh, because this work piece even though all the cutting is happening within our um, 48 inches it's beyond what the CNC can handle the material. So I just go in here and lower this um, down. So you could do like 40, 44 inches. Um, so that'll be safe there. And then on this, this one here, we could do uh, 40 inches um, would be safe. So now let's go and we'll start off with this lower one and we'll uh, export it by going to uh, machine and then general settings and then you go generate g-code and then this generates the uh, roughing in detail so you first run the roughing g-code then the detail um, once you're done with um, this first piece then you um, move the board down and uh, repeat the process done being uh, cut I'm going to spray paint it and then sand it so it turned out well I used this rust-oleum paint and now I'll go on to sand it using a low grit sandpaper all done sanding one thing to note is the paint is pretty hard on the sander I was using 60 grit uh, sandpaper and I had to change um, the sandpaper and use a total of 10. Now on the side, I saw someone who, what they did is they just used a table saw and took off like a 16th of an inch or less of the board. So I'm going to just rip it down um, ever so slightly. And then on this end, I'm going to uh, do the same thing, take off like a 16th. Now that the bottom is cut and then I ran it through the table saw and ripped it. It's all done. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. I plan to continue to post how-to videos using a CNC to my channel and also put information and tools on my website.